Okay, we're going to try to fix this uh, truing stand crank wheel again. So I brazed this all up and then melted the aluminum into the thread. Tried to push it out and broke the wheel again over here, which I have not fixed yet. So now it kind of wobbles like this. But anyway, I got my tap. So 5 ace 11 coarse thread, left-handed thread, backwards thread, which is what the, this is. So let's see if I can fix this thing. I'll give it a try here and see what happens. Appears to be the right thread. That's a plus. Let's see if we can tap it before the crank wheel falls off. I'm going to have to weld it again. Cutting oil in there. <clears throat> we'll go on the thread. Of course, the camera's not seeing none of it. Figures. And for cutting oil, I use a sun and honing oil. <clears throat> That's what I use anyway. Yeah, I probably don't need this big one. Standard small one. I like it better anyway. A lot of aluminum coming out. Turn up my table too. Yep. Appears to be caught in it. You can hold up for a week because you don't have your parts. Tools you need. It's been almost a week and a half, I think. It's been at least a week. I'm going to tear a piece of wood to my countertop. I'm going good until we stopped right there. Cut steel there. Cast iron anyway. Now it's starting to go all the way through. Nope. I had to go through some brass, a little bit of steel, or cast iron in this case.
if this goes on there, we're good. If it doesn't go on there, we're screwed. There we go. Appears to be good. The problem I got right now is I don't have a die for cutting the, the brass off, so I can only go in halfway. Which is why it broke off before, is because it's not threaded until you get to here. That's why it broke there. This is all undercut here. See, it goes into that far before it does any threading. So, it goes in there pretty far. Alright. See if we can make our trigger stand work. Come on, Scooby. You're in the way, Scooby. Scooby's in the way. Come on, Scooby. Let's go. Go get him. Got the ambulance. I got a crank. I got a true somewhere around here. I'm not sure where it's at, though. Okay, we need a little bit of grease. Get some of this stuff here. these junk motors laying here. There's the fly we got true. It's right next to the truing stand. Amazing. How'd that happen? Uh oh, Scooby's trapped. Are you trying to get out of there, Scooby? How are you going to get out of there now? What are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do? Come on. Let's go. How are you going to get by? What are you going to do? Yeah, you're going to crawl through that. You're going to crawl through there, aren't you? Look at that. There, he's a smart dog. Yeah, that's a good boy. Alright, let's go over here and see what we can do here to see if I can screw this up over here now. We'll have a go at it. So where'd my tool go? Oh, lost it. There it is, right here. Yeah, we're gonna do this. I wonder if I could cut this thing. No, actually, I can cut that. Need to braise this up before it falls off again. You know what the chances are that gonna be, don't you? No. Let's see if I can cut this in lathe. So we got a lathe over here for fixing crap like this. See if we can do an external cut. See with the left handed thread I can actually hold it against this and cut it like a regular thread. I was wondering how I was going to hold on to this thing accurately. Now I have a leg. We can cut this here. You just have to get by the OD of this as far as that's going to go. Yep. Still ain't going to clear. I'll fix that problem. Just made it. I'm working the wrong side. I'll be on this side of the chuck. Try to turn the brass down first. 
Somebody said my stabilization of my camera wasn't very good. Maybe if I quit jerking on the damn thing, it would be more stable. Huh? First thing I do is turn down the thread until the right diameter. Okay, we got about an inch before we hit the chuck over here, so we're good. Not very even. Tighten a little bit. That didn't quite work for Freddy. Very straight. I can live with that. Kind of. Okay. Now, is that thing going to stay tight or is it going to unscrew on me? It's going to unscrew on me because it's going the wrong direction, see? Yeah, we're cutting the wrong direction. I can only put as much drag on as what I can tighten it up to. And then it's going to unscrew and destroy itself instantly. That would be interesting. Yeah, it's pretty much a one-time deal. The first time you screw it up, it'll be the last time. All right. Nothing like living dangerously, right? Okay, it's pretty tight. Okay, this was, uh, I think, seven threads per inch. So I gotta cut my, uh, set my, um, damn it, my pitch gauge on here. This has a compound down here where you set your, how many threads per inch you got. So seven's gonna be way over here where this one is. And we gotta go to A, which is gonna be the first one over here. should be seven. So that should cut seven threads per inch, which would be a lot. I want to slow the speed way down. 
because I know what it's going to do. About half a chance to save it before it rips it apart. Probably not though. Okay, now we gotta find my my tap. Let me tap my threading bit. There's my threading bit. Problems that won't fit in here. And if I use this one. Not the right angle. It's not even close to the right angle. Have to regrind it. It's got to be the same angle as what this one is. Thread angle. Or I got to use something else. What else do we got? What else do we want to destroy when it comes loose? Ooh, look at that. That looks like it would almost work. That was custom made for grooving something. Could probably make that into a threading deal pretty quickly. The problem is it's the wrong angle. But if I cut upside down, it would cut good. Upside down though. So you have to figure out how we're going to make this work because we have a very limited angle. So you have to make this somehow hold it. Take all this junk out. got to be at the same angle as what your thread is. This stuff's always fun to do. Here's something I can use. Look what I found. I found this thing here. I can drill that. Come in there almost straight. That would work pretty good. Alright, so this is a topping angle here. It's a pitch gauge here. So this has to be at the same angle as this. So if I grind this one here back until it matches this angle here, that would work. This is also the same angle here. And this little one. And this one over here. They make all these angles the same so you can line this up. That's how you, that's how you make this stuff. Okay, so if I take this and regrind this, I can use this right in here. And go in straight. Just like I need to go. And I'll probably be able to clear all this stuff here. Because I got clearance issue here and clearance issue here. Alright, so we're gonna go back and grind this a little bit. Be back. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and grind this uh, new tool bit on the grinder. So we got our surface grinder, which don't work too good for doing this, and then we got the pedestal grinder. Well, it's my case on a table now. So first thing I do is going to match up this angle. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to sharpen up this side over here. It's a long angle one. And then I'll come back and recut the short one to match up to what I need. So we ground the angle right there, get it sharpened up. Okay, now we come in at the other angle and we got our angle finder right here to duplicate what we need. Let's do it all by hand.
Okay, initial hit. I'm going to see how far off I am. So, see where the air is at. You compensate. Okay, I'm not sure where the air is yet, so i got to get it where I can see it. I can't make out where the air is because i got a bad top on this. Got a crud on there. Get that cleared out of the way, I can see it better. Okay, it appears it's almost 90 degrees, and I need to be 37 and a half, as I recall. We're way off. Okay, took another big chunk off of it. Come back and see how close we are this time. A little bit closer than we were before. It's getting hot too. Trying to cool it in the water over here. Appears to be, I need a lot more off again. So do one more cut. We just keep cutting on until we get it. See how we're a little off still. See, I got that much clearance in it. So I take off another chunk off the back side here. Until we get what we want. I can double check. Getting a lot closer now. But I gotta grind a tip in. I don't know if you can see it, but a little tip there is where I've been grinding. Instead of grinding the short side, I decided to grind the long side, but my angle's getting close. But I have to grind it until that tip cleans up. Otherwise it won't cut right. Close, but I still got a little bit more to go on it. Come back and check our angle. I took a little bit too much off the back side, so I got to grind a little more off the nose.
Okay, we're getting pretty close now. Too much. Yep. I need to take a little bit more off the nose, but not much. Where I'm off. I think I want too much. Yeah. Too much. I'm grinding too much on the nose. I need to come back a little bit. It's hard to get good help. Pretty close. A little off, but close enough. So you got a cutting edge now all the way up on the edge. It's undercut. Undercut means you have an angle where you it goes under like that. So it's like a knife, it'll cut on both sides. So it's called have positive clearance. Alright, so that's all sharpened. I'm gonna go back inside and <clears throat> see if it'll work inside the machine. If not, I can come back and rechange the angle until it works right. Oh, let's go see what we got. Okay, back to our lathe. Let me see if this will work. Okay. Looks like we've got a lot of nice good angle here, so that should give us our clearance we need. So it should work. Now if I can cut upside down, it'll work better, but the problem is I didn't grind it that direction for the offset. So can't go that way. You can't see what I'm talking about because the camera sucks in that angle. So you can see how the cutter's all set to the left right here. If I flip it over, that means I'm going to the right and I'm coming to the wheel over here. I can't cut over here. I'm against the wheel. So you go back where I had it over here. This has to be in there straight. So when you when you trace in your V, your thread, you go right into your thread right there and you try to catch it. And you cut all the way across. That's how so a thread cutter works. You have to catch that original thread. If you don't, you start cutting double, triple threads, and that don't work very good either. It's not too hard to catch your old thread while you know what the hell you're doing. This tells me if I'm low or not. In this case, I'm high, which is all right because I got an upward angle on my cutter. Now, probably in the 
blow this side, but we'll see. Make sure pretty good. So if your tangent line's vertical, you're good. So can't get the camera over here, we need to look at it, but anyway, you look at tangent line right now, it's slightly downhill, which means I need to come up just a little bit on my tip. If you're cutting hard material, that's good. We're cutting brass. Brass doesn't like negative angles on it. And the other thing we gotta do is line up our cutter. So this is now parallel to the part. So it'd be like this, not like this, or like that. When this is parallel to your part, then the thread angle here is straight. So we have to get that set up in here too. So you get all these different things you gotta line up. First thing you do is put a little tilt in it. it turn it so it's straight, which is going to be one over here. Back some more. Tangent angle looks good. Top angle looks good. This tripod ain't going to help us at all in doing this job. An overhead shot like this to see what's really going on. And I gotta use my other hand. Okay, so this here goes on here like this. You make sure your angle, your bit is straight, parallel to your part, and you know that's in there straight. I did my tangent line over here on my bit, so it's going straight up and down, not angled like that or like that. So that means the cutter height is at the right spot. Okay, now we can go set our thread pitch. So the threading, you watch your number over here. Make sure everything clears where we're at. We're good. Okay, we got this set on our on our A7, A8, which is seven threads per inch. Which I think is what we want. Now this gets over here at number one. I'm gonna engage it. Right there. So now we're engaged at number one. And this now moves, see? Okay, now we're gonna start moving all this, these other dials in. So we're gonna zero that one out. this in until it comes in on center. I use the camera to see how close it is. Okay, it looks pretty close. So we got this set on almost zero. And this one over here is an 8.3. Change this to 7. There. Back it up a little bit. Back to 6. Let's see if we're getting kind of a chip. Six five. See how we're cutting. So we're 
cutting on this side here, not the other side. So this is, uh, I'm going to pull this back a little bit. It's 12. Cut something here, I wasn't sure what. Cutting the inside, I'm not sure. Okay, see how it's not shiny on this part here? It's not shiny on this side of the thread, it's shiny on this side of the thread over here. So that means we're cutting on that side, not this side. So we're going to put this right back to where we were before, right in the middle, on this dial. This one's about 6'5 right now. Okay, I'm going to back this thing out all the way. Reverse it. Not the other way. I'm not disengaging my feet, so I'm staying on my number one. Theoretically, engage in the same spot, but if you just leave it engaged, you don't have to worry about it failing on you. Okay, now we got to turn this one here until we get close. Let's see what we got. Again. Hello. Hello. Okay, I'll get that tap then. Okay, bye. Alright, I gotta buy some more special tools for another job. Okay, so now we should be able to just feed this one in. This has to go all the way to six before we touch. So we're not hitting anything right now. We're just making sure it's following the thread. It's a high spot. And there's 55. Disengage it. I think I'm cutting on the inside again. Yep, I am cutting on the in that side. So I'm going to change this to zero now. And we'll have to back this number off a little bit because this one's feeding in this way. So as this one feeds in, you can't have this as deep or it'll cut the bottom. Okay, so it looks like we're cutting the correct thread when we're way over here. I want to see if I can catch that thread right over here and make sure that one lines up correctly. Make sure we don't have any wobbling clearance issues. Okay. Here's our thread. Looks like we're lined up. Okay, we're only at nine right now. We're a long ways to go. Okay, let's see what happens here. Okay, we did not touch. That was uh, just under nine. Back it up a little bit so you don't hit. Yep. Reversing switch. Remember, if this thing moves on this shaft, we're screwed. It cuts the threads off. Probably breaks some stuff too. Okay, this was on nine before. So we're going to go all the way to ten this time. We are not touching. Why does that look like it's way the hell off now? Something's different. Something changed a bunch. Or it just looks like it changed a bunch. Six we're cutting pretty heavy. And we're cutting that much number. It looks like it was way off, but it wasn't. Okay, right there. Okay, 
we cut 10 before. So we're going to go 11. That's 20 thou deeper. Still not cutting anything. Okay. We're going to go to zero next time. That was on zero. So at least now we know we're going to be making contact on the next pass. So it's just a back and forth deal. Okay, there's 10. Plus 20 thou pass now. There's 20. Back it off. See the line it made is all it did. Didn't act like it wanted to cut it though, did it? Okay, there's zero. Okay, looking better. Scooby's working hard over there. What are you doing, Scooby? Are you working hard? Tools are in the way. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of cotton oil on this thing because we're actually starting to do a little work now. So it doesn't want to hurt to do a little, a little lubricant on things. Okay, we're on number four. Let's see what happens. plunging straight in right now. And if I feed this one at an angle, it will wouldn't be so much of a cut on it. I think I cut four last time, I'm gonna cut five. Some kind of cut in there. Number six was our final. I don't think it's going to be our final. We'll go five and a half this time. Six this time. Oops. A lot of free play and everything, so. Let's 
it out in your full turn off. It doesn't put. cutting right here but it's hard to see what you're actually doing your cutting or not the brass is so shiny it's hard to see that actual thread we're cutting it okay now we have this up and down problem right now well this is going like this we're going to start cutting this away we don't really want to but oh well if I don't do it in a way I'll put it together So we did six last time. Six and a half. Some more oil on it. So now we cut all the way across. Six and a half, and do six and a half again. So the brass is so hard, it just kind of bounces away and cut it. So we're gonna keep doing a few passes on there, the same cut. this time. Two more lines, that's four thou. But I'm not gonna run all the way across. I'm gonna get cut on this side here where we just want to cut. cut in the uh, cast iron so it gives you a bad number to go by. That'd be a good cut.
Eh, only seven this time. Brass does not like to cut. Okay. All right, that's it for this one. Take it out. Got no way of checking it assembled, so I should take it out and look at it. All right, that's what it looks like now. Let's go see if it'll go in the machine. If the screw is in the trim stand, we're good. If it doesn't, we have to do more cutting. So we just have to see what we got to work with right here. Let's see if things in my way. Oh, the camera's not staying tight either. Good. This box is crap on my way. Even the original threads didn't like me. They didn't even want to go in on the original threads, like they were oversized or something. It's kind of weird. So I don't know if it's the OD here is a problem or if we got the still just too big on the pitch. I'm not really getting to the <clears throat> to that part of it yet. So it looks like the whole thing is just way the hell off. All right, so we'll do some more cutting. <clears throat> Quit screwing around with it this time. We'll do some cutting. Problem is I can't reverse a lot of stuff I've already done. All right. This diameter here might be too big. <clears throat> That'd be one of the, some of the problems. Let's see. Let's turn the OD down a little bit. We don't like that noise. Nope. Then they're shooting fireworks off down there with guns, one of the two. Scooby don't like those noises. How's that, Scooby? They're shooting at you again? Yeah, they're shooting at him again. Look out, in my way. 
move it. It still feels like the tip is sharp, but I didn't want to cut it in. <clears throat> Try it again. I shouldn't disengage it. Then. around this time. Cut it deeper. First, I cut the top of the threads away, not as tall as these. 
And I pounded in a lot deeper here than it is over here. I quit cutting on this first thread here when I got to here. I quit cutting because I was cutting a lot deeper. Because every time it hits this brass, it just kicks it back. It's a lot harder. So, anyway, we'll see how it works this time. You can see how it's not too hard to catch a thread. Pretty easy to catch them if you know what you're doing, actually. Everybody thinks it's pretty hard doing that, but it's not. It's not that hard to do it once you get it in there the first time. We already got the cutter set. That was the hardest problem. Sharpening the cutter and getting it set. A little bit of lubricant on the threads in here. A little grease. Things dry, ain't helping it. Okay, let's see what we got. Coming from the back side here. Threads in easier now because I cut all the threads. Still a little tight. And that's as far as we're going to go with that. It doesn't want to go where the brass is. Have to go in. Hmm. You don't like me. All right. I think it's good enough to use though. I deal with it. Oh. Okay, get some more lubricant on here, grease. Helps to have a little lubricant on all this stuff. Tighten it up too tight. Put that in a lathe real quick. Get it broken up and I can come back. I'll be back.